The next presenter is Dr. Bob Miller. He is the technical director uh, for the Agricultural Laboratory Proficiency Program. I uh, wasn't able to join us here live today for his presentation, so we have a virtual recorded presentation, and uh, we hope he's able to um, join you live for the Q&A after. So I'll start the video, and uh, if the online audience can raise a red flag, if, some, if they're not hearing anything early, that would be wonderful. The title of my presentation today is the Manure Analysis Proficiency Program, Trends in Laboratory Manure Testing. Yeah. I'd like to take this moment to thank my co-authors, Melissa Wilson, Associate Professor, University of Minnesota, and Jerry Florin, retired Minnesota Department of Agriculture. Farmers rely on manure testing to determine their crop nutrient requirements. The primary goal is to ensure that farmers receive accurate manure testing results by using laboratories certified for manure testing. The MDA certifies laboratories for manure testing based on their performance in the MAP program. And the re program requires that labs have acceptable al analytical performance on both phosphorus, total nitrogen, by one of two different methods, total Keldahl nitrogen or nitrogen by the nitrogen in combustion method. The manure analysis proficiency program administered by the Minnesota Department of Agriculture was established in the mid-1990s to assist analytical laboratories in the mid U.S. Midwest and verify the accuracy of laboratory manure analyses. In essence, this program came out of the fact that a lot of manure is being applied to fields in Minnesota and that they really needed to get a handle on what the quality of the results were that the farmers were using to make their recommendations. In 2003, the program was expanded to a national program with an annual enrollment of approximately 60 to 74 labs over the past two decades. This presentation will cover analytical performance of the primary manure analysis parameters of total solids, nitrogen, and phosphorus. The, map, the manure analysis proficiency methods are based on those of the 1998 NCR 13 publication, Recommended Methods of Manure Analysis, was edited by John Peters at the University of Wisconsin. And there you see the URL for that website where you can find that manual. Initial MDA methods from 1998 to 2003 for evaluating laboratory performance look at the following parameters, total solids, electrical conductivity, ammonium nitrogen, TKN nitrogen, nitrogen by combustion, and four primary elements there of phosphorus, potassium, sulfur, zinc, and copper. And the results are reported on an as-received basis. Additional analyses were added in 2004, and in further additionals of calcium, magnesium, and sodium were added in 2008. Laboratory proficiency is based on two, two single blind exchanges of three different manure samples representing a range of manures, and each manure sample is in triplicate. Manure sample preparation, we have two different ways we handle these samples. The liquid manure samples are bulk homogenized and BT proficiency test aliquots are pulled out as subsamples and then frozen. For solid, solid manure samples are ground to a minimum particle size. They're bulk blended and subsampled and then frozen. Manure proficiency samples homogeny is, off, is evaluated prior to shipping based on the total nitrogen and total phosphorus analyses. Samples are shipped frozen overnight, express delivery to laboratory participants. If we take a look at the data analysis that's done in the proficiency program, we hear up here is a diagram on the far right listing out ranking of total nitrogen by combustion results for a series of laboratories for one of the manure samples, in this case, M2000G. Lab proficiency is evaluated based on consensus of the inner laboratory median and the 95% confidence limits as calculated by the median absolute deviation, whereby the MAD looks at the summation of deviations from the median, the absolute value thereof. 95% confidence limits are determined by 2.9 times the MAD value. Individual lab precision is assessed based on three replicates. So if you look at the diagram on the right, you can see the mean, the mean value for each reported laboratory and the error bars associated with that standard deviation of that measurement. And there we have the consensus median there of approximately 0.6% nitrogen by combustion, but we have values range from approximately 0.05 all the way out to 0.75. And the 95% confidence limits are there indicated by the dashed lines of the upper and lower control limits. 
Now, I have to explain two definitions here that we measure in the program. We have the interlaboratory RMD, which is the measure of relative variance of the method across multiple testing laboratories of the analysis. It's calculated by the MAD divided by the median times 100. In essence, rather than its relative standard deviation, we're looking at a relative median deviation here. The interlaboratory RSD, that is the variability within, the coefficient of variation within a laboratory, is based at looking at the calculation of each individual laboratory's RSD and taking the median of those values. Again, it's expressed as a percentage of, of 100. Our typical reports that are put out in the MAP program provide a summary of method performance. We list the median, the 95% confidence limits, the interlaboratory reproducibility. In other words, what's that consensus median is of the RSDs of all lab participants on a given method. And we have the lab results, the mean interlab repeatability. That's that actual RSD that the lab performs on, or reports on a particular test method. An example here at the right is this, the, one of the reports from 2004. And you can see the statistical analysis of all the methods that are evaluated at the top half of the sheet. And at the bottom half of the sheet, we have the actual plots, the individual plots of each methods in terms of what the interlaboratory data says about that particular method. And if you'll notice, and it's probably hard to see in this slide, there are a few analyses there for the individual lab of 4,012, and then it was being flagged for TKN. And it basically had a low bias. And so there were also issues with precision for EC and TKN that were noted. If we kind of look at a quick summary of just a few analyses here, <clears throat> this is total solids, TKN percent nitrogen, nitrogen by combustions, P and K analysis for two samples <clears throat> that were submitted in 2003 as samples A and B. Proficiency results show for high solids, liquid manure is at 2003, that, that these samples were so very high precision across those number of laboratories. In this case, we had a median value for A of 74%, plus or minus 95% confidence levels, plus or minus two. Conversely, there we have a liquid manure on the far right column, shows a mean concentration of solids of 1.5, plus or minus 0.26. So you get a good feeling here of how these analyses perform down the page. In this case, the TKN numbers, either method, I'm sorry, nitrogen by either method, TKN or nitrogen by combustion, the median values are almost identical. In this case, for liquid manure, they are nearly identical. And you get a handle on what the inner laboratory variance is there's there for the 95% confidence limits. As well, you see there phosphorus and potassium numbers. We see a very large change in the concentrations of these elements as we go from liquid manures to solid manures. <clears throat> so if we take a look at the distribution plots for our total Keldahl nitrogen here and combustion nitrogen, and these are all samples that were ran from 2003 through 2018. There's 118 manure samples in here. This data set encompasses a range in total solids from 1.5% to 91%. We'll see just a quite a dramatic shift there in the RMD value as the concentration of those particular, of the nitrogen in the sample goes down. And that <clears throat> goes up rather dramatically on the combustion instruments. Now, if we look at this in greater detail, interlaboratory relative medium deviations here for liquid manure samples, and we compare the two methods, the TKN method versus the combustion method, we see quite strikingly differences here for these liquid manures by these two different methods of nitrogen management. Now, this is based on a data set of 27 samples taken from that 2003 through 2009 period. This is the early part of the program. And we can see here that there's relatively much better precision across the laboratories as a whole on the TKN method relative to the combustion method. And then in fact, that the combustion method really starts to fall apart in terms of precision or between multiple laboratories once the concentration falls below approximately 0.8% nitrogen. And this is a real problem for this because obviously there's some limitations of the instrumentation to measure nitrogen accurately. Interlaboratory relative median deviations here for the same type of analysis, liquid manure samples ran from 2010 through 2018, shows quite a bit of improvement, at least on the TKN side here. And we have here TKN nitrogen versus uh, combustion nitrogen for 22 samples. 
that were ran during that period through the PT program. And that you can really see that it's pretty static that the average deviation between laboratories here for the TKN methods running about five to 6%, while that of nitrogen by combustion is running over 10%. In fact, Kate Nelson does a very good job statistics, sorry, Kate Nelson statistics does a very good job parsing it. Overall, we see quite a bit of improvement in these results over time from the, from the use of this proficiency program. If we look at intralaboratory performance, this is how well these methods perform within a laboratory. Remember, we're doing the measurement of RSDs in all the participating labs, and we're looking at how well these laboratories can precisely measure in their laboratory on all these manure samples. And again, this is only the 2010 through 2018 data set. You can see that for TKN, once we have a concentration fall below approximately 0.2% nitrogen, the, the variability just increases radically because we're, fall, we're falling now into the detection limit of that particular method. Likewise, we have combustion nitrogen, and we can also see that it's much higher than it is on TKN, probably in the 0.1%, I'm sorry, 0.5% area where it completely starts to fall apart and shows you how well Again, the limit, or sorry, how, what the limitations of this methodology is. If we look at phosphorus now, we have distribution plots for phosphorus for all 108 samples that were ran from 2003 through 2018. And we're limiting now here liquid manures to anything less than 12% total solids versus those samples that have solids more than that. We call these semi-solid solid manures. And you can see that the distribution for phosphorus is considerably higher. The interlaboratory variability is considerably higher on the liquid manures, again, because we're dealing with low concentrations. And we see semi-solid manures, solid manures, it's much, much lower. It's on the order of 6%. So this is kind of to be, to be expected because the quality of the, of the type of uh, uh, subsampling errors that are associated on liquid manures is higher. If we look at MAP performance across a range of analyses here, this is a composite comparison of interlaboratory RMDs for 72 MAP samples. And again, this is 2003 through 2013, shown at right. Uh, this is a subset, again, of the whole data set. Uh, you see there for total solids, the interlaboratory variance, relative variance is 4.7%. TCAN and is running about 11, phosphor, sorry, potassium is running about 11, 15%, phosphorus is 17 to 18%. Nitrogen by combustion considerably higher than TKN, it's at almost 19%, and EC at 31%. The FAR column there, the interlaboratory RSD, shows you that for total solids across 72 samples, that mean concentration, the mean RSD within a laboratory is running about 1%, which is very outstanding. And across the rest of the analyses, you will see there that all these values for the internal RSDs are running around 3 to 4%. Again, this is the average across 72 samples. There's obviously samples that are higher than that and samples that are lower than that. Uh, pretty remarkable that if you look across all the analytes, we're looking at an average RSD within a laboratory on these methodologies based on three samples of three replicated samples across 72 different matrices we're looking at a value of 3%. Results of this program show that the TKN method has consistently had the lowest interlab RMD values relative to nitrogen combustion. Why is that? Well, the TKN method uses a larger subsample for analysis, and generally the nitrogen combustion instruments have a much higher level of method detection limit than that of TKN. For liquid manures, total solids are less than 12%. It's recommended laboratories use the TKN method for analysis. There's just a real limitation on liquid manures on combustion instruments. MAP program results show continuing laboratory improvement. We've seen a lot of improvement in the specifically in the nitrogen analysis, both for TKN and for nitrogen combustion over the life of the program. Um, phosphorus RMD results show that there's pretty significant difference between liquid and solid manures in that the liquid manures have a much higher variance. Overall, laboratory RSD values <coughs> had the poorest precision in the samples that have low concentrations. Uh, but when we look at the variability within a laboratory, uh, there's pretty much less, th less than 4% across the analytes we've looked at. I'd like to take a moment and thank 
Larry Gunderson, supervisor at the Fertilizer Management Unit, Minnesota Department of Agriculture in St. Paul. He's been instrumental of putting this program or continuing this program over the last 10 years. And he's really been the one that's been in charge of the, the continuing upgrades of the program in recent years. I'd like to make a pitch at this point for the new manure methods manual, the second edition of recommended methods of manure analysis, which will be published in the coming month by the University of Minnesota Libraries Publishing. This has been a large task for a group of people across the country, both academics and people in industry. Uh, we've really put a lot of time into this. It's been, it's been quite an interesting project for me, but I think it's far worthwhile. It's a real update and an upgrade of the original manual that was published in 1998. Uh, we, don't, we don't seem to see Bob online. However, uh, Melissa is very familiar with the MAP program, and so she will try to answer some of your questions if you do some, have some of Bob's program while I bring up her presentation. Any questions that I might or may not be able to answer? Good. So the question for those online is when are the labs updated online and how often are they updated? So they do update them every year. So they do, they send out two certifying rounds of manure samples every year and they have to pass both of those for the previous year. So the ones that passed everything in 2021 would then be, or participate in 2021 are then listed for the 2022 year. So it's kind of how they um, work that program. And they have both MAP participants listed. So you can be a MAP participating lab, that'll be listed on the website. And there'll also be MAP certified labs. So if you go through the further qualifications and meet the standards, then you can be certified for nitrogen or phosphorus, I believe as well. So those are updated annually and they do have their 2022 labs listed there now. Any other questions? So we were Yeah, absolutely. So the question was, because of the variability in what we see with labs, is there ways to think about sending liquid manures as we move more towards liquid storage systems? Yeah, absolutely. We definitely saw that TKN was better for liquid manures. And I think that's because of the methodology for combustion. I don't know if anyone's familiar with combustion analysis, but basically you have manure, you put it into a tin or some other thing, you let it, and then it has to sit as it goes around a warm you know, thing until it finally drops into the incinerator. So basically it's allowing, we think ammonia to kind of come off the top. And that's why we see more variability. So there's different ways that some of these instruments are dealing with that. They're trying where they might have a liquid manure that would be dissolved by some inert substance. So that way it's losing less of this ammonia. Um, so they're trying different things like that. We do have one lab that we're, that I'm working with through this methods manual that's also looking at uh, kind of wastewater technologies that would be used for measuring total nitrogen and kind of applying that to some of these really liquid manures like coming off of lagoons or something like that. So that's kind of in the works too. Um, but yeah, definitely if you have a liquid manure, maybe thinking about the lab you're sending it to and what methods do they use? Because it clearly shows that TKN in this case is a little better. Unfortunately, we have seen a shift over time in people wanting to do combustion. Combustion is way easier and safer. Like Keldol is kind of nasty. It's a really nasty <laughs> Um, you know, acid and mixture that you have to boil things in for like a long time. So obviously combustion would be preferable if we can use that, but we do see more variability in it for sure. Yeah. 